Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on um, Pinterest, a variety of places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, tonight I'm going to be talking about recorder, beginning recorder, what I do on the very first day, and also what I do before the first day to prepare for the first day. Um, and so I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So a couple quick things. Um, if you hear me talk about a specific recorder or a resource or an extra that you think is great, um, I have put all the links for that all in one place. I call it the links page on my blog. Well, there's a direct link at wherever you're watching, listening to this. Just click on the, the um, caption. You should be able to go straight there. Or you can go to makemomentsmatter.org and click on the video tab and go there. Um, okay, another thing, if you are interested, um, if you're like, wow, this is fun to do this PD um, on the internet, but I'd love to do it in person, I'm going to be in um, Augusta, Georgia, coming up for the Greater Augusta ORF chapter. Um, that is on March 23rd, and then I'd be at First Iowa ORF, the ORF chapter there, on April 6th. So if you want to you know, come in person, do an in-person workshop, those are coming up. So come and join us for either of those, either Greater Augusta ORF in Augusta, Georgia, or First Iowa ORF in Cedar Falls. Okay, so let's talk recorder. I know some people love recorder. Some people hate recorder. But I feel like everybody has questions and trepidations, and every time they teach a recorder, they're like, oh my gosh, how did I do this again? Like getting started, I feel like there are a lot of questions, a lot of thoughts. So um, I'm just going to share what I do that's not necessarily the perfect way or uh, the right way. I don't know. It's just the way I've done it. And I'm going to share just some of the ideas that I have picked up over the last few years. First of all, you have to figure out what kind of recorder you want to use in your classroom. The answer is, I don't know. The answer is you get to choose what is the right recorder for you and your students. Um, I use all Yamaha recorders at my school just because um, there are there are different brands that don't always play well together. And so, um, I mean that literally and figuratively, <laughs> like, uh, because some brands are just slightly off and um, Recorder is uh, out of tune on the best days. And so <laughs> we want students to have um, the best possible chance to get a good sound out of the Recorder. So that's the reason that I say to my students and the parents of my students, we're all gonna buy the same exact Recorder. Um, I order all the recorders for students. Uh, there are some who are like, well, I already bought one or whatever. And so I say, send it in. Let's talk about it. You know, um, and we'll, we'll look at it. And very rarely will I say, no, you can't use this recorder um, unless it's like something they got at the Dollar Tree or super flimsy. Uh, but usually um, when I make the, the or send the email out to parents or, or make the explanation of like, well, we all get the same one because they won't be in tune otherwise. Um, I have very few parents push back on that. Um, so, but I, I like to get the Yamaha recorders and that is just the brand that I've, um, I'm used to, that I've used a lot in the last couple years. And so it's the one that I'm most comfortable using. So that's the brand I use. But I know some people who love the Air Angel recorders, the Parapoles. I know some people who love other recorders. What I would say is just stick with one brand. If you mix brands, sometimes, most of the time a brand is going to be consistent within itself, within its own family and stay tuned together. But different brands don't always play well together. Um, I think the one that shows up a lot in ORF levels is like Owl. Well, I think it's the Angels, the Parapol Angels, and Yamahas don't necessarily play well together. I think the Aulos recorders and the, and the Yamahas do. I don't know. Anyway, I, I at my school, I stick with all Yamahas. Now, some other people have very specific thoughts about which recorder to get within just the one brand. Um, I give my students an option. Um, so I like this recorder. It is uh, the Yamaha YRS24B. This is the white version. However, you can also get it in a variety of colors. Ooh, pink and green and blue. Now, um, these are not the YRS24. These are, or sorry, these are the uh, YRS20. There's 20B, there's 20... Uh, Oh, they have slightly different designations for the colors. Um, but the the YRS 20Bs, those are the ones that I think go pretty well. Um, and they're basically this recorder just in a color. Some people are like, I don't want the transparent, colorful ones because um, I don't want kids to love 
playing recorder. No, just kidding. <laughs> they, most of the time, uh, people say that they don't like it because you can sometimes, when kids play a lot, the condensation builds up inside the recorder and you can see it dripping through. And some kids don't like that. Some teachers don't like that. I personally don't care. Um, I want kids to be excited about the recorder. And if a see-through colored recorder does that for them, great. Um, where do you get your recorders? Well, you can get them from a variety of places. I would say don't get them from Amazon. Uh, I would say get them from your local music vendor or um, and I would I would say even better than like getting it from like Woodman Brassman or whatever the like big vendor I would say look for the elementary vendor that uh, does the most for you and does the most for maybe your state MEA so uh, does West music or music is elementary or sweet pipes or uh, another vendor, do they come to your local MEAs? Do they support you? If you call in, will they help you out? Those are the people you want to support. You don't need to support Walmart or Amazon. You don't because they don't need um, your money. They're fine. So I would say uh, get it from somewhere where you feel real comfortable. Now, I've gotten all my recorders from West Music in the last couple years. It's the vendor that my district prefers. Also, I've just had a great uh, history with them. They're they're uh, fantastic. If you're ordering a bunch of recorders, call in. If you're getting them through the school, ask for a quote for your school. Um, they are very great and often, like if you get a volume, they'll give you volume discounts. If you get um, over a certain number, oftentimes they'll give you free shipping and stuff like that. So it's worth uh, reaching out to the vendor you're buying from and ask. Now, one thing that there's, there's a vendor called Sweet Pipes. If you've never bought anything from Sweet Pipes, well, actually, if you've bought or if you've bought books to use at ORF levels, you've probably bought something from Sweet Pipes. It was originally um, a publisher of books for like uh, recorder, uh, beginning recorder, recorder consorts, uh, things like that. And then they also now have a uh, a wing that doesn't just, just publish books, but also sells books. So uh, the cool thing that they have shared in the last year that they're doing, um, Sweet Pipes, if you call them or email them, they will set up so that parents can go straight to the Sweet Pipes website, pay for the recorder, and then they will hold all the recorders and send them to your school all at once, which seems like magical. <laughs> like um, you can have a parent, you know, go to this website, the website you send them, buy everything online. You never see the money. No kids coming in with like a bag full of nickels to pay for recorders and it all gets there and then it gets sent out all at once. That seems amazing and magical. And I, I know people who have done this and it's worked really well. Um, so if you're interested, I put a link on the links page to um, a Facebook post where, where um, Sweet Pipes details everything they do for that. Uh, so check that out if you're interested because it makes ordering easier. Uh, what happens at my school is the kids all bring in money and I have to go, you know, deliver to the secretary and we have to make one big check and it's a pain in the butt. So this cool thing that Sweet Pipes is doing, it's worth checking out. Um, and so go to the links page, check that out and see that process of what it looks like. Um, and it, it's, if you email, uh, you'll probably talk to Billy. He's one of the uh, sales people there, an owner there, and he's amazing and will be able to tell you all about how that works. So if you're interested, email Billy or send him a message and um, that's all there, but I linked that on the links page. Okay, so that's when you get your recorder. Now, when the recorder comes, it comes in a bag like this with a bunch of crap the kids don't need. Um, so what I do is once the recorder comes, I take it out and I keep the recorder and basically throw everything else away. Um, I don't, th this bag is a pain. It, because it's hard for them to get the recorder in and out. If you add an extra, it's like impossible. It gets gross. It's, it's, I just, do, I do not love it. Now, um, that's if you get one of the colorful ones. If you get one of the white recorders, you get this like chic, ooh, cloth bag. It's so very nice. Now, what I do... Uh, for my students is um, I buy a recorder. I also buy um, a bag and a neck strap. Um, I buy from West and they're like house brand for recorders it's called Harmony. And so I buy the Yamaha recorder and then I buy a, a, this like white Harmony bag and a blue Harmony neck strap. So this is one that I like I've taken it home because the kids, they get very specific. And so I had to decorate my uh, recorder bag to look cool like theirs. So um, the I've decorated mine, but this is, it's the nice bag. It's basically the same as the Yamaha bag. And then um, it, I also buy a neck strap for kids. It's like blue neck strap. It's really easy. It cinches down on the recorder. Uh, so my kids get a bag, a neck strap, and a recorder all for me. Um, and what I found is that the fabric bags 
if you uh, wrap up the, the neck strap around the quarter, they all fit in the fabric bags really easy. You can wash the fabric, fabric bags. So I prefer the fabric bags, that's just me. But basically I take the recorder out of its gross plastic sleeve, I toss all of the stuff inside. They don't send a cleaning rod anymore, you don't need it. Um, they don't. They add a little like pamphlet in there. I don't give that to kids. I It never makes it home. I don't think they ever look at it. So I, I toss all that. Um, the one thing that I do add to the recorder before I hand it out is first, right here on the back of the mouthpiece. So here's the front where it says Yamaha. On the back, I write the student's name in Sharpie. I know some people who get out like the inscribing pens. Fancy, not me. I, I just take a Sharpie and I write their name on there. I write their name on the bag. Row for me. And um, then I also add down here below um, on the back of where, so your, your left hand goes on top. Yeah, and your right hand would go on the bottom. So your left hand, you know exactly where your thumb could, sh should go because that's where the, the only hole is on the back of the recorder. But I take a little hole reinforcer, a little sticker, like you might use those little circular donut shaped stickers you'd put around, you know, like a, a hole punch hole um, as a reinforcer. I put one down here on the bottom because that is where um, your thumb, your right thumb is gonna go when you start putting your thumb on the recorder. So I put that there as like a little phantom extra hole down in the bottom uh, for when we get there. Okay, so let's talk about first day recorder. Now I teach in a school where I have an hour long lesson. So my lesson format slash my timing and pacing might look different. Um, uh, so anyway, so <clears throat> it might act, seem a little different, look a little different um, than how you do it. But uh, let me share sort of how I do it. Jennifer asks, do you have your kids clean the recorders? No. I have them play their own recorder. They use only their own recorder. If they use a borrowed recorder, then I will wash it or clean it or sanitize it. My um, The lunch ladies in my school say, yeah, give them all to us and we'll run them through the industrial dishwasher and that'll sanitize and heat them all up. So that's what I do, but I don't have kids share, so I do not have them clean their recorders at school. If they take it home, they can, but, um, and I email parents, here's how you clean it, blah, 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 but I don't um, have students do that. Okay, so first day of uh, class when kids come in and it's recorder day, we do not start with a recorder. We do a little simple uh, rhythm reading exercise. We do a little bit of solfege. We read um, some solfege on a staff. We do some of that. And then I teach this song, um, the song Shake Those Simmons Down. S circle left, do, duo, duo, circle left, duo, duo, circle left, duo, duo, shake those simmons down. It's an old song. It's a song where we have a little dance. We do some things. It builds up so that they do circle left, circle right, in and out. Eventually we'll add do, si, do. So like do, si, do, 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 do. I, I learned do, a, do a the first time I did this. And then I realized like nobody else says the words like they say do, duo, duo. Every time I sing it, it messes with my head. <laughs> so sorry. So um, so you eventually can do do si do duo duo do si do duo duo do si do duo duo shake those simmons down. And so you can add a bunch of verses. But my students, we learn it, we sing, we do circle to the left, we circle right, we do in and out, and that's basically as far as we get in this lesson. Now in upcoming lessons, we'll add. Uh, do si do or promenade or something else in there if we want you can add a variety of different verses why are we doing this it's it's a fun way to like sing get something out of the way that we're very good at doing um, reminds them how to do some folk dance stuff but then also not in this lesson but in future lessons um, it's gonna go sorry it's gonna go circle left duo duo circle left duo duo circle left duo duo b b a a g it's going to be something that the kids are going to be able to play the recorders for a little bit of the song later on and then if we get very good at it we can bring it back and it can be um d e g b b a g d e g g g e d so it, it'll use all the notes that my students are going to learn in this first year and it's going to be something where they can apply that and play that but we we start it just as a song just as a dance and then we move on and kids don't think oh well what's what else is coming from that song they're like oh yeah we did the dance great um but that's just to start the lesson um we we do our rhythm we start we do that song and then i say oh my gosh it's time for a recorder Whoa, we're so excited okay but to do the recorder you must know 
the rules. Okay, important, here are the rules. So before they ever get the recorders in their hands, we talk about the rules. First rule is you play your own recorder. You cannot play someone else's recorder it, it, because it's one of those instruments where your mouth has to go on the recorder. It's a, it's a wind instrument and you have to put your wind, your air into it. So you, you're, if your mouth is touching it, you can't share with someone else. It'd be like if you were in the lunchroom and you had just finished some mashed potatoes and you took your spoon and you went, mm, that was delicious. And someone said, hey, I don't have a spoon. Can I use yours? And you said, sure. And you shared your spoon with them. You wouldn't do that because germs. So even though if someone's like, oh, you have a green recorder, I have a blue one. Can I try yours? You'd say, sure. No, you would not say that because we can't share recorders because germs. So you play your own recorder. That's rule number one. Rule number two, there will be a student teacher. Oh, and no, I don't mean Miss Dots. I don't mean our actual student teacher, like who's learning to be a music teacher. That's not what I mean. What I mean is uh, the student teacher is when you come in the room, I'm going to say someone's name and say, you are today's student teacher. And the student teacher gets to go back to the cabinets, pull out the bin that has your teacher's name on it, and they're going to start calling names. And they're going to look and they'll say, David. And they're going to put the little recorder down on the table. And they're going to say, Aubrey. And they're going to put it on the table. And they're going to say, um, Javon. And they're going to put it on the table. And they say the kid's name, and then they set it down. And when you hear your name, you got to go get your recorder. Okay, so, but that's, the, the student teacher is in charge of getting the bin out, handing out recorders, and you're not going, David, and wait. You're not going to wait. You're going to say their name, and you're going to put it on the table. They're going to come get it. They didn't hear it. That's their fault. But you don't wait for them, because the kids who, like, wait, it, t it makes this last, like, 12 minutes handing out recorders. We don't got time for that. So the student teacher, you put down your recorder, you, you say the name, you put down the recorder, they'll come get it. Oh, and at the end of class, when everybody puts their recorder back in the bin, the student teacher puts it back in the closet and closes the door. So that was something I did a couple years ago, the student teacher thing, just to help speed along that process of taking out and putting away recorders. Um, and it just makes my life a little easier. Okay, so rule number one, you do not share a recorder. Rule number two, the student teacher is in charge. Rule number three, um, when you come back to your recorder, you're going to get your recorder. There's some hand sanitizer there if you want it. And then you need a left hand band. Now, years ago, um, I start. I got these like stretchy kind of, not loom bands, but like, I don't know. People, some kids do like weaving or things with them. Of course, I don't have one here. But I know some people who use like little... Um, uh, slap bracelet things or they'll I do not encourage that because kids will slap 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 and do I, I got this like it's like a bag from Michael's or something it's like 150 of these like they're kind of like pantyhose material I'll track down exactly what it is but it's just like red and blue and yellow and white and whatever different colors and they're really cheap fabric and the kids take one they put it on their left hand I know some people who use like uh, those like uh lay they're not really lays but like the little flower bracelets or, or other kind of bracelets that kids put on their left hand just to help them remember your left hand stays on top your left hand stays on top your band hand needs to be on top and so i always say like when you come back and get your recorder get a band okay then uh so rule number one you only play a recorder rule number two there's a student teacher rule number three get your left hand band four um, is when you come in, there's going to be a warm up. It's not just get out your recorder and just sit and you know dabble. No, there's going to be something on the board for you to do. So always go and look and see what's there, because that's what you're right away. We're going to be playing. So watch and see what you're going to play. Okay. And then um, I think there's one other thing in there that I can't remember. But then the last one I say is that um, there are three positions for, to play the recorder. So. Position number one, once you get your recorder, you're going to take your neck strap, you're going to put it around your neck. Position one is easy. No hands on, all hands, your hands are off the recorder, your mouth is not on the recorder. It's rest position. The recorder's just hanging around your neck. Easy peasy. And you're going to love this neck strap because this neck strap is nice that when you let go of the recorder, it just hangs around your neck. If you didn't have this neck strap and you had to like set down your recorder on the ground, uh, that germs. It Because, you know, you're putting your mouth on this thing. It'd be like if you finish some mashed potatoes in the lunchroom and you said, I'm done with this spoon and you set it on the ground and then you realized you had a jello cup and you picked that spoon up off the uh, off the ground and you used the gel and then you ate off of it. Germs from the floor are now in your mouth and if you set the recorder on the floor, you're gonna have germs on there. So it's nice to have the next strap so you can just let it go and relax. Also, because germs, do you wanna put your hand on the mouthpiece? No, germs. Ugh, gross. Okay. So anyway, the first position is rest position where it hangs around your neck. The next position is the one you're going to want to use all year long. 
is playing position. When the recorder is in your mouth, you have two hands on the recorder and you're playing and making great sounds. That's playing position. So rest position and playing position. And the, so playing position, it's in your mouth. Rest position is just hanging around your neck. The one in between is practice position. Practice position is when you put your recorder on your chin and your fingers are doing all the things your fingers would do to play, but you can still hear me talking, can't you? It's because I'm not blowing air into the recorder. It's not in my mouth, it's on my chin. See, look, it fits right here on my chin. That's why we have chins, is so that recorders can go right here on your chin and you can play in practice position. That's not true. That's not true. But th this little dip here is perfect to fit on your chin. So that's what I say that's what your chin's for. But your chin has other purposes. Anyway, so you have three positions. Playing where it's in your mouth and you have two hands on the recorder. Practice is when it's sitting on your chin, you're not blowing into the recorder, and you have two hands on the recorder. And then rest position where it's not in your mouth and you don't have any hands on the recorder. Easy peasy, those are the positions. And then I say, okay, here's the student teacher, and we go get recorders, and we hand them out, and we get started. Okay, so once kids get the recorders out, we take them out, we put the, the neck strap around their neck, um, and we um, get ready to play. I say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's been so much fun. Okay, so guess what? First thing we need to do is figure out where your hands go. Now, do you have your left hand band on? Raise your left hand. And they raise their left hand, and I raise my left hand. And so the, I do not mirror when I'm playing recorder. I do not mirror them. Sometimes I'll do that for other stuff. I do not mirror them for recorder. So I say, do you see how your hand on that side has gone up and my hand on this side has gone up? Am I backwards? And they're like, uh -uh. I was like, look, my band. And I have, you know, like I wear a band. And I say, because when I turn around, look, we all, our left hands are all the same. But when I'm looking at you, it looks like maybe my right hand is on top, but it's really my left. So I say that the very first time we do anything before we even play. So they know in their head, I am not mirroring you. Look for his band to make sure he's going to make sure the right hand's on top, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so I say, so your your left hand is your band hand. Okay, but what I want to start with is your right hand, your right hand. So we take our right hands, and then I say, um, your right hand, do you see this part on the bottom? This is called, the, called like the foot of the instrument or the bell. Can you just take your hand and sort of gently just hold it like this? Great, because we got to get the left hand going. So can you just hold this one right here? Um, I used to always enforce that kids immediately had their thumb just right here to hold the recorder, but it's like they could never quite get that, and it was always pushing the recorder weird, and until they started using these fingers, it just didn't make sense. So then I saw someone else doing this, and I was like, oh, okay, well, they don't, it doesn't affect the sound all that much. I mean, they're beginning recorder players, they're not, they don't sound on the Carnegie Hall level. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so this is not gonna affect all that much. So anyway, I used to say, like, don't like hold and wrap your hand around, like block, um, air holes, but just like gently rest it here. Okay, now your left hand. Your left hand, you're going to put your thumb on the, the hole on the back and your first finger on the first hole in the front. Oh gosh, I forgot. I also take a time where we like count up how many holes are there in the recorder. There are 13. Um, anyway, but we, we go through and we find all those. Anyway, so I forgot to say that part. Whoops. Okay, so your thumb goes on the back, on the only hole on the back, your, on your left hand, and your first finger goes on top. Okay, great. Now, it's time to play. I'm so excited. I get to play, and then you get to play. Okay, great. So, get your recorder ready. Okay. And then I go... And then, of course, they all overblow, and it's too loud, and it's squeaky, and it's crazy. And as they're playing, I go like this. And I, like, make that face, and they're like... And they all giggle, and they think it's hilarious. And I was like, I forgot something. I forgot, I forgot to tell you how to breathe and how to blow in the recorder. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Okay, go back to rest position. Ignore that, forget that. We don't want that anymore. Okay, rest position, sorry. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot. And they're all giggling and they think it's hilarious. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so let's talk about breathing because you have to breathe when you play the recorder. Well, you have to breathe all the time, but you especially have to breathe when you blow into the recorder. So um, first thing, hold out your hand and pretend that there's a birthday candle right here and you're gonna blow it out. Okay, now there are four birthday candles and you get four specific blasts, one for each candle. Here we go. Oh, you got it. Okay, now hold your hand even farther. Can you still get the candles? Let's find out. Four of them. Ready, go. Okay, great. So you got the candles. Now it's right up here. Do four more. And so we do four more birthday candles. Then I say, okay, pretend it's last week that really cold morning and your mom's like it's too cold you can't walk to school I'm gonna drive you to school okay so um, you're sitting in the car but mom's like I gotta get some Starbucks so she ran inside and you're in the car you're bored but it's nice and warm in the car but it's cold outside 
when I, that was my life when I was little, um, and it was really cold outside and it was warm inside, I would always do this. I'd go, <sighs> and the kids are like, I was like, I would write my name on the window. They're like, mm hmm, yeah. And then my mom would get mad and she'd be like, stop writing your name. So I go, okay. And she'd go, what are you doing now? It's like, I'm drawing stars. She's like, stop drawing stars. And I go like that. And then she said, what are you doing now? It's like, I'm writing your name. She's like, don't do that. So then, but the kids all understand this. And I was like, okay, so pretend there's a window and you got to heat it up. And now write your name. Oh, that's fun. Okay, try again. And write your name. Yeah. Okay, when you try to steam up that window, what does the air feel like? And they're like, it's warm. Oh yeah, it's warm. Okay, write your name again. And then just pretend. Okay, but now there's a birthday candle there. Blow it out. Steam up the air. Oh, birthday candle. Where'd that come from? Blow it out. What's the difference between those two? Do you feel a difference? Let's try it again. And we try it again. And eventually they suss out, okay, warm air for steaming up the window and cold air for blowing out the candle. They also might figure out war or, or slower air versus fast air. Or one kid said intense air for the candle. I was like, whoa, good vocabulary word. Anyway, we talk about the difference between the two. We talk about warm air is the kind of sound that you want to get out of the recorder. Warm air keeps the sound warm, I tell them. And so you don't want um, cold air. If you use cold air, it's going to squeak. In fact, I'm going to let you try on purpose to do four birthday candle air blasts through your recorder. You're going to get four. I'm going to say, ready, here you go. And you're going to get four. And you're going to play four, and I'm going to do this. And I'm plugging my ears. I'm going to plug my ears, and you get to blow. Okay, get your recorder ready. How are we going to, remember, right hand on the bottom, just holding loosely, thumb and your first finger. Okay, and now you're going to play four, and I'm going to plug my ears. Ready, here you go. And they do it, and it's terrible. And I go, okay, okay, don't do that again, because that was the sound we didn't want, and it was crazy. Let's do the nice, warm, gentle, relax. Okay, chill, we're chill, we're steaming up the window. Okay, I'll play, you echo. And then we do a couple back and forths of me playing them echo. And the sound is significantly better right away. Okay, so but there's another thing, friends, that, if, that you might squeak. And anytime I talk, we go rest position, out of their mouth, out of their hands, uh, for this first day. There's another thing that might make you squeak. So if you hear a squeak, there are two things you need to think about. Is it a squeaker or is it a leaker? Squeaker, you already know. That means you're blowing too hard. Is it a leaker? That means air might be escaping out of one of these holes where you're trying to cover it up, but you're not getting it. So for example, if you have one of these cool translucent recorders where you can see through it, if you put your finger over the hole, you can look through the recorder to make sure you've covered up the whole space. Um, and then you know you've covered it all up. Well, there's actually another way to tell. Um, but uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to practice something, um, and I'm, we're going to make sure that we cover up all the holes. So put your thumb on the back, put your first finger on the first hole, and then just for fun, put your next finger on the second hole and your third finger on the next spot. Okay, now you're not going to play. It is not going to be in your mouth. What you are going to do is you're going to go Incredible Hulk. You are going to try as much as you can to crush this recorder with your fingers, not your air, not playing. You're going to press as hard as you can and crush this recorder. You get four seconds. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Ah, did anyone break the recorder? No, they didn't. But look at your fingers. Do you have little alien dots? And by alien dots, I mean these like full circle shapes, right? If you have a full circle, that is good. That means you have covered the recorder hole completely. If you do not have a full circle, if you have a partial circle, a semicircle, that means you have not completely covered the hole. And it could be a, you could have a leaker. So here's when I play the note correctly. Here's what happens when I let some air leak out. It doesn't sound good. Air is leaking out. So you've got to make sure you completely cover the hole. So we talk about squeakers and leakers. We've talked about breath control all before we've ever really played. I say, you know what? We're running out of time. We just got to play because if you're going to take this recorder home, you need to know three notes and two songs. You can't take it home until you know three notes and two songs. So let's learn three notes today. We got uh, 10 minutes. I bet we can get three notes not two songs. We can get three notes. I bet we can. Okay, so the first thing, your right hand is on the bottom. Your left hand is on top. You've got your first finger and you've got, you've got your thumb on the back, sorry, and your first finger. This is the first note we call B. 
B. So I'm going to play, and you get to echo. I'm going to play B, just B. Okay, and so we go through, we echo several different things. Maybe I'll even say B, 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 and I let them play it. We do several. We talk about squeakers and linkers if they're squeaking again. Um, we warm up the air. We chill. Okay, now the next note, when we're ready to play the next note, so your thumb and your first finger. I'll just tell you something, fourth graders. Um, if you're playing any of the notes we're going to play this year, this is so crazy, but you will always use your thumb and your first finger on your left hand, always. There is no note we're gonna play this year where you will not use them all year long. We could almost put tape around those holes because we're like not even gonna use them, but you always, always keep those fingers there. Don't do what the, first, the fourth graders did last week where I said for the next note for A, you've got thumb, first finger, and second finger. And you know what the fourth graders did last week? They did thumb, first finger and just second finger and they lift up their first finger and I went no thumb and for thumb first finger and second finger all down and they went great thumb first finger and just second finger and they lifted up their first finger. and I said no okay do the fourth graders really do this no I'm lying to my students but um, it, it's silly and they remember it so thumb first and second is a we play we do examples we do back and forth a and then I go now I'm gonna be tricky so we've echoed back a bunch of just A, and I go, listen carefully. And they can hear the sound change, and I go, did you notice there was a change? And they're like, yes, you played A. And I said, you know what? Actually, I have another recorder so you can really see it pretty easily. Because when I'm playing the soprano recorder, it's kind of hard to see if I'm lifting up my finger because I don't lift it up that much. But if I play this recorder, my tenor recorder, you probably will be able to see. So hold on. Let me play thumb, first finger, and second finger. And they can really see and they can really hear the difference between a tenor and a soprano. So what a tenor does is it's an octave lower. Um, and the kids can really hear that difference. And they can really see if you're putting your fingers down. They can see more easily because your fingers are going to be more spaced out on the tenor. Do I let kids play the tenor? Not for a long, 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 long time. But do I use it as an aid? Absolutely. So I pull out the tenor, I let them um, see that, we do some echoing, and that's when we switch back between B and A. Oh my gosh, students, we're almost out of time. Let's make sure we learn our last note. So thumb, first finger, second finger, and third finger is the note G. Let's play G. So we play, we echo, and then we do some patterns where I'll do G and A or G and uh, G, A, B. We try different things. Um, and then when we're out of time, I say, oh my gosh, we're out of time, but you've learned all three notes, B, A, and G, and you've learned how to blow into the recorder, how to fix some squeaks, and you even know where your hands go. This is a great start. And then the next time we'll just build on that. But that's like day one for fourth grade. Okay, oh, oh, wait, there's one more thing. If you're gonna put your recorder away, I gotta show you how to do it. Okay, so recorders, when you put your recorders away, you gotta hold the neck strap out like this, and then you, like, if you just wrapped it around and made, like, like, like a scarf, it's not gonna fit in the bag very well, so what you wanna do is you wanna wrap it kinda like a candy cane, and if you wrap your recorder kinda like a candy cane going around down, then when you do a, a nose dive head first into the bag, it goes straight in. If they wrap it like a scarf, it usually gets caught right here. I also say, I know there's a little cinch here, don't cinch it. If you cinch it, it's gonna mess things up, so just leave that. Um, and then we put away and we're done. Now, my older kids, they eventually realize uh, the recorder has multiple parts and um, if I have a different color, I wanna make this cool Frankenstein recorder where there's a green mouthpiece and a blue body and a pink foot, I don't care. Uh, I, I personally, again, it is my personal preference um, they're all the same brand and they're the same style. So I would hope from one recorder to the next, there's not a lot of difference as far as the tuning. So I don't care if the students change. Again, I'm not playing at Carnegie Hall, so I don't have, it doesn't stress me out. They're fourth graders. So, but if you don't want to do that, totally up to you. If you want to have them all play all white recorders or all black or whatever, you do that. You decide. But uh, for my kids, I don't care. So usually at the end of class for my fifth graders and end of the cycle fourth graders, I give them about two minutes to switch out. But I always say, if you're going to switch parts, you can switch the foot. You can switch the body. You must keep your head joint. You must keep your mouthpiece because, first of all, your name's on it. Okay. But second, it's the part where your mouth goes. You can't change that part.
it's got to stay yours. If you ask someone, hey, can I trade you your green for my blue? And they say, no, thank you. You you have to stop. You can't you can't keep asking them. If they say no politely, then you got to move on. If they say sure, then you can change. But otherwise, no. Okay, that's my super duper quick. I saw someone, someone ask a question here on Instagram. So that's my super quick day one, but let me answer this question. Um, someone said, what grade do you do this with? Fourth grade. And also, where do you buy your recorders? That's a great question, but I answered it in detail at the beginning of the video. So I'm not going to re reiterate all of that now. However, if you go back to the beginning of the video, you can see all of that, where I buy my recorders, the cool, cool program from Sweet Pipes about um, how you can buy recorders, but don't have to deal with the money. That's cool. Um, but if you, I'm going to, once this video is finished, I'm going to post it on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube, and will be part of the blog, or part of my podcast, so you can always go back and listen to that anytime you want, and get all that information whenever you'd like. Okay, that's it for uh, Musical Mondays this week. I am not here next week, because it's spring break, ooh, and I'm gonna be on vacay. So, uh, if you have any questions or thoughts about Recorder, please leave them in the comments, and I'm gonna try and come back when I'm around um, to answer those, and, um, address stuff if you have questions. So please leave those there. Um, if you have uh, I, questions about any of the other stuff I covered, the video is going to be posted in a lot of places. So go back and check it out. Um, or if you're like, oh, you didn't, uh, I have a further question, email me, leave a comment. I'd be happy to come back and grab those things. Okay. I will see you all in two weeks. And if you are in the Augusta area uh, of Augusta, Georgia, I might see you on March 23rd at the Greater Augusta Orf Chapter um, in Augusta, Georgia for an in-person workshop. I hope you'll be there. All right, everyone, have a great couple weeks, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.